Hey, everybody. Hey. Welcome to After the Sermon. My name is Justin. I'm Carrie. And uh, today we're going to continue the conversation that Carrie started on Sunday mm -hmm. about the seven statements that Jesus makes from the cross. Yes. So this is a part of a series called Know the King. We're walking through the Gospel of John. You were in John chapter... 19-ish. 19-ish. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and uh, we're going to be talking about the seven statements that Jesus makes from the cross for mm -hmm. two weeks. You started this week and looked at the first three. Mm -hmm. And then my friend Jason is going to preach next week, and he's going to look at the second four. Mm -hmm. And you called those seven statements. Tell, tell everybody what you called those seven statements. Um. So... I, I got it from a commentary. It's not okay. my mind, but Jesus is reigned from the cross. Okay. Mm -hmm. So his declarations, mm -hmm. his kingly declarations yes. made from his throne. Yes, the cross. Ooh, so the cross is his throne. Absolutely. Not a gold throne. Mm -mm. Not like big back, like where the elders sit. That no. kind of throne. Mm -mm. The cross. The cross. Wow. And it has his title on it and everything. Wow, that's yeah. so cool. All right, so we're going to look at these first three, but let's really quickly review the seven. Okay. Okay, so um, number one is... Forgiveness. Father, okay. forgive them for they know not what they do. Number two? Salvation. Today okay. you'll be with me in paradise. So he, for, he, he offers salvation to one of the thieves that's on the cross. Mm -hmm. Number three? Is the family one. It's uh, when he gives John to his mother, Mary. Okay. Gives Mary to Mary his, to John. John yes. gives them to each other. Yeah, <laughs> they says, take care of each other. Hey John, take care of my mother. Yes. Number four is abandonment. That's the lowest point. Okay. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Yes. Mm -hmm. I hope my friend Jason focuses on this, but that to me, I had a paradigm shift with that one when I realized that was a statement that comes from a psalm, and it's right mm -hmm. in the middle of a psalm, mm -hmm. like. And in that psalm, there's the psalmist makes the switch from "My God, my God, why have you forsaken me." Yet, God is always faithful. He's always with us. So there's this crazy matrix, matrix thing happening on mm -hmm. the cross. Um, anyways. All right. Number five. Um, no. I thirst. I thirst. I okay. thirst. So that's whenever, yeah, he's thirsty and they offer him something to drink and he refuses it. No, he does take it. He does take he it. He absolutely takes it. This is pure wine that okay. he will take. And um, the reason why that's so important mm -hmm. is because that last drink gave him the strength to shout the last two statements. All right, so number six. Um, it is finished. It, it is, is finished. completed. Yes. I loved how you said that on Sunday, that it was it was almost like, to say that. So it was the word, to telestai, okay. that craftsmen would use when they would finish a project. They'd step back. It's done. It's done. There's nothing I've else. Left I've left it all there. It's done. Cool. Mm -hmm. And then number seven. Um Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. This right. is when he gives up his spirit to God. And, and is and reunited. And is reunited with the Father. Yeah, made one with the Father. Mm -hmm. What a journey. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. seven declarations, kingly declarations, proclamations from the throne of Jesus, mm -hmm. which is the cross. So I want to I want to talk about two things. Number one is you focused on those first three, and you talked about those being the the horizontal, mm -hmm. so the, if the cross is, you have the vertical and you have the horizontal, mm -hmm. that he starts with the horizontal, yeah. which is to give it away, to focus on those around him. Mm -hmm. Now, I would imagine, and I think you would agree with this, that in American Christianity, we would think that Jesus should start with the vertical, mm -hmm. that it should start with me and God, yeah, and then it would work its way out. Oh yeah, I can't count how many times I have heard people say when things are happening and people are calling for change, no, 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 no. We just need to focus on me and Jesus. Me just and Jesus, me and Jesus. And that'll fix everything. Yep. And then... Then fix everybody else. Yeah, if I got a little bit of overflow, yeah. here you go, you or know? if everybody's focusing on them and Jesus, then we're not going to have to need, care for anybody. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so, but what we see Jesus do, the example he sets for us from the cross his politic, mm -hmm. it's his ethic, the way that things are supposed to work, is that he works actually horizontally. So he offers forgiveness to those who are crucifying him. Mm -hmm. He offers salvation to the, the thief on the cross. And he says, John, take care of my mother. Mm -hmm. And he redefines family. He starts horizontally mm -hmm. and then turns his attention to God. Yeah. I feel like this is a from the Bayman podcast and Marty Solomon, those guys. This is a very Eastern way of looking oh, at yeah. things, mm -hmm. an Eastern way of, of experiencing the world. And that is that I'm going to start with the we, mm -hmm. and then the me will be right after I, I focus Absolutely. on the we. So 
what what comes to mind whenever I describe that um, that that difference between what we experience in the church and American Christianity and what Jesus is offering us? Um, I need you to clarify that. Okay, so yeah, where that's a great question. What I guess what do you see that? Do you see that playing out like in your experience with the church in America? That it's more of this yes. and less of this. Yes. And I can tell you, um, I haven't been to Haiti but twice, but going to a different cult- culture and seeing how Christianity is experienced there, it is very outward first, then upward. Yeah. They make sure everyone is cared for before they deal with what they need to do. Yeah. And you you yeah. said before we started recording, we even see this where Jesus will feed the 5,000 he will teach. He will ah, heal. That's what, yes. And then he'll go and he'll spend time with the Father. Absolutely. He takes care of everyone yeah. around him. And then he goes with the Father. I'm watching The Chosen right now because yes. you recommended it. And he even does it there. They yes. set up the camp and he says, okay. Everybody gonna, good? Everybody good? I'm going to yep. go spend some time with the Father. Yeah. And, and then yeah. Sunday I did the, the, the communion meditation. Mm-hmm. And we even see it in Matthew 6. Where he says, if you forgive those who sin against you, uh-huh. your heavenly father will forgive you. Absolutely. So, so man, this is, uh, I know this is a paradigm shift because the way we preach sermons, the way we experience Sunday worship, the songs that we sing, the way that we talk about our relationship with God, our spirituality is so, it's vertical mm-hmm. first and then whatever I have left over, I'll give it away horizontally. But Jesus shows us from the cross, we start horizontally. Yeah. And then this relationship with God, we experience the fullness of it because of this relationship. Absolutely. And that's what he's showing us. Mm-hmm. All right. Now let's talk about forgiveness. Yeah. This is hard. This is hard. Um, like I said in the sermon, the earliest manuscripts of John do not have this line in there. The, it Was it John or Luke? Sorry, Luke. 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 So that's crazy. Can you... Tell us that again. Yeah. So I didn't have a chance to fully expound on this, but um, when Luke was copied, it was right around the time that Jerusalem fell, that um, it was completely demolished by the Romans. This is post-resurrection. Post-resurrection, 70 AD. So Luke was Acts chapter in... 2 has happened. Sermon has been preached. Yep. The church is growing, but they're being persecuted. They're being persecuted, and then Jerusalem falls. Okay. And when the earliest copiers of the books saw that happen, they believed that was retribution from God for crucifying Jesus. And they were like, how can we preach forgiveness for those people when God condemned them? Mm. And it wasn't, <laughs> but it was just they, they could not wrap their mind around forgiving the people that killed Jesus. So let me, let me make sure I understand. So they kept out of that early manuscript this statement from the cross where yes. Jesus says, Father, mm-hmm. forgive them for yes. they know not what they do. Exactly. Because they could not understand how would God forgive those who are persecuting us? Exactly. Exactly. Especially because they Oosh. weren't Christians. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, we see this in the world today. Oh, yeah. Now, here's what immediately, I mean, you were preaching this. I was sitting there listening, tracking along, and immediately in my head, two things happened. Number one, amen. Because I have said this for so long. I cannot, I can't count the number of times that I've entered into a conversation and said, But what do we do with this really difficult statement that Jesus makes from the cross where he says, Father, forgive them. The people that are throwing rocks at him, the people that are nailing nails into his wrists, the people that are spitting on him, they're selling his clothes. And he's like, forgive them. Mm -hmm. What? I mean, so radical. The second thing that came to mind was the story of Jonah. Mm. The story of Jonah. Mm -hmm. So... Jonah, God calls Jonah to go to Nineveh. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like the Ninevites. No. Do you have any historical background on that? Uh, So the Nineveh Nineveh was the capital of Assyria, and they were vicious and um, sworn enemies of Israel. The Assyrians were the ones that took out the northern kingdom. Um, It would be like God telling us to go in the heart of a place where we've been at war. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, and and Jonah's like, no, mm-hmm. not doing that. Mm-mm. And gets swallowed by a fish, spit up on the <laughs> beach. And then he goes to Nineveh yeah. in Jonah chapter 3. And then in Jonah chapter 4, he kind of throws a fit. <laughs> and he's like, why are you being merciful to these people? Uh-huh. Why are you forgiving? 
Why are you willing to forgive them? Yeah. Why? And Jonah is unwilling. He is unwilling to forgive his enemies. Mm -hmm. And and how different this would be. And so you, this is what really stood out to me in your sermon, was you said, sometimes whenever, whenever we're having a hard time forgiving someone, maybe the first step is to say, Father, would you forgive them? Mm -hmm. Or let me say that, my Father, would you show me how you are forgiving them? Yes. Remind me that you have also forgiven them because they are created in your image just like I am. Mm -hmm. And as I pray that prayer, Father, forgive them, then God, invite me to participate with your forgiveness. Absolutely. Do a transformative work on my heart because right now I'm Jonah. Right now I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm not forgiving them. I don't want you to forgive them. But the first step is the prayer, Father, forgive them. And then my heart follows the action of the Father. Absolutely. Because Jesus didn't have to ask God to do that. He had the authority to forgive yeah. sins. And we see that throughout the Gospels. The Son of Man has the authority to forgive sins. He could have said to I, those people, I forgive you. Your sins are forgiven. But he didn't because he was very human. Yeah. And it hurt. Mm. And it was shameful and humiliating. And he asked God to partner with him. And I wonder if he was showing us an example because he knows how hard forgiveness is. Yeah. I wonder if he's showing the example to the disciples, whether it's John sitting at the foot of the cross, Mary sitting at the foot of the cross, or if it's the disciples who are off in the shadows, probably watching this from a distance. Mm -hmm. And he's like, boys, I know this is going to be hard. Ladies, I know this is going to be hard. You're going to have to forgive these people because you're going to preach the gospel and then they're going to come and they're going to give their lives to me. Yeah. And you're going to have to forgive them. You're going to have to forgive Saul who's killed some of your friends mm -hmm. and I'm going to transform his heart and turn him into an apostle sent to the Gentiles. Yeah, like <laughs> absolutely. Well, I mean, when Stephen, the very first martyr, is being stoned, he quotes Jesus in this line. He says, Father, do not hold this sin against them. Wow. And, um, so he's showing us an example of how to yeah. go about forgiving. And I think forgiveness is so hard, especially if we've been through something very traumatic, mm -hmm. something difficult, something that's left a wound, a scar, like <clears throat> really tough relationships. We don't want to let go of it. No. It's not that we want revenge. I mean, sometimes we want revenge, but it's, it's like, man, I don't want to... I don't want to get walked on again. Right. And it's not that forgiveness equals being walked on, but in those moments where forgiveness is hard, I love this. I love that you taught us this. Like, Father, show me how you are forgiving them mm -hmm. and then help my heart to come alongside of your forgiveness. Yeah. yeah. Is It's just a different way of looking at forgiveness. It is. Right? It is. And, and we've got to free ourselves from holding on to the grudges. And, um, you know, a line I didn't put in the sermon, but almost did. I've heard holding on to um, anger and what and the hurt is like drinking poison and waiting for someone else to die. Mm. All it's doing is hurting you. Yeah. And all it's doing is hurting your relationship with God. Yeah. So instead, ask God to come alongside you and show you how to forgive. Yes. Mm -hmm. God, go first. Yeah. We, do, we say this at One Life. Do a work... Like, do a work in me and then through me. Mm -hmm. Like, God, I need you to show me how you're forgiving this people right now mm -hmm. because I'm not catching it. And then I can come alongside of you and I can participate in this. Yeah. And, um, and, I, and I said this during communion. Like, the way we will experience the fullness of God's forgiveness is when we're willing to give it away. Absolutely. And, and so when it, we see it in real life, when we see it in our relationships – whether it's in our marriage, our kids, our family, our friends, our enemies, mm -hmm. like there's something powerful that happens whenever we participate with God in this forgiveness. So, mm -hmm. well, I hope that is super practical for you. I know it I was for so. me. So mm -hmm. I want to say thank you for teaching this. Oh, thank you. Uh, my toes are sore too. Yeah. I stepped on my own. Absolutely. <laughs> it was fantastic. All right. We will be back next Monday to talk about the next four statements, the mm -hmm. declarations from the throne of Jesus. And so join us next week as we continue that conversation. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.